You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Welcome to this episode of the Business of Practice podcast, where we focus on the business side of equine veterinary medicine. In this episode, Drs. Stacy Cordovano and Kelly Zaytunian discuss employee engagement in equine veterinary practice. Cordovano DVM founded Clay Creek Equine Veterinary Services in Pennsylvania in 2010 and expanded to a two-doctor practice in 2021. She started production of the Whole Veterinarian Podcast in 2020 with the goal of connecting fellow veterinarians with resources to aid in their personal growth and development. And just as a little editorial, if you haven't listened to this, you need to go listen to it. She's an active member of the American Association of Equine Practitioners and now serves on the AAEP Wellness Committee. Zaytunian DVM MBA CERP, which is the Equine Rehabilitation Certificate Program, is the owner of Starwood Equine Veterinary Services and Starwood Veterinary Consulting in California. Zaytunian serves on the board of directors of the Northern California Association of Equine Practitioners. Both Drs. Cordovano and Zaytunian are the co-chairs of the Practice Culture Subcommittee operating under the AAEP's Commission on Equine Veterinary Sustainability. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Drs. Cordovano and Zaytunian. We have so much to talk about, and I would love to spend hours with both of you on this and related topics. And I know our listeners are going to find nuggets of knowledge in this podcast they can put to use today. So let's get started. We know it's difficult to hire veterinarians or staff into equine practice today. So that makes it even more important to keep practitioners employees engaged and retained. But first, can you please tell us a little bit about the subcommittee on practice culture that's part of the AAP Commission for Equine Veterinary Sustainability? So our subcommittee is one of six subcommittees that ha- was formed last year. Um, The AAP recognized that recruitment and retention was their top strategic goal for the next couple of years and formed these committees to really target some tangible um, ways to improve kind of overall practice life for equine veterinarians. So Kelly and I uh, were asked to be the co-chairs of the practice culture subcommittee which uh, has a great group of committee members and a fairly wide breadth of of scope. (laughs) We're basically trying to make practices uh, a better, more enjoyable place to work. Um, So that encompasses quite a lot of things. Kelly can kind of elaborate on our kind of top two or three goals for this upcoming year. Yeah, our biggest goals and the trend that kept coming up as we were discussing, you know, what makes a great practice, what makes uh, a not so great practice, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries was just the number one topic that we felt was low hanging fruit in the sense that we we just needed to get after it um, first and foremost. And so um, we've really been discussing, you know, what are boundaries? How do we successfully discuss them with our team members and find out, you know, what is going to work for them? What's going to work for us? What are tools to help us communicate amongst the team and with our clients on um, those different lines in the sand that we want to draw? Uh, and I'm excited to say we are working on some deliverables that will be available um, shortly for practitioners, owners, or associates to to bring to the team and use to really start to stimulate some positive conversations. Um, surrounding um, that particular topic. Well, that's going to be wonderful. So let's let's talk a little bit about quiet quitting and engagement versus disengagement. And they're key terms in all businesses. So can one of you define those terms for us? Kelly might be able to get into more specifics, but okay, I, like Dr. To be, <laughs> I like to be really um, general and just say quiet quitting is kind of doing the bare minimum. So like coasting. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, last year, the past couple of years with COVID, we had this great resignation and it has now turned into quiet quitting. So the people that were going to leave and go somewhere else have gone and done that. They've 
found new opportunities. They've started their own businesses. They've completely left the workforce. Um, But now we're left with these individuals who are still on the clock, punching in, punching out, and really just doing as little as possible to stay under the radar and make a paycheck. Uh, There's an interesting poll that came out um, from Gallup that shows that um, the percentage of engaged employees under the age of 35 dropped six percentage points in 2019 to 2022. And I think those actively disengaged employees actually increased. So we have all these young workers who are basically, you know, going to get a paycheck, but not super invested in their practice. And their reasoning behind that is that they don't feel like somebody cares about them. They don't have someone encouraging their development um, and they're not finding opportunities to learn and grow. So if we see that, I think this is our opportunity to try to promote those areas, you know, have employment that does care about them and does encourage their development and finds uh, areas of of practice or work life that they are really interested and invested in so that we have these employees that actually want to stay with us and um, not just, you know, be sort of a, a plateau or a baseline, but actually promote some growth within the business itself. That's really great. And yeah, Gallup has some great information on that. The Business of Practice podcast is brought to you by Care Credit. Care Credit keeps equine veterinarians at the heart of care by providing horse owners with simple, budget-friendly financing options. By bridging the gap between cost and care, Care Credit supports healthy financial relationships between veterinarians and their clients. It can help them move forward with care a horse needs whenever and wherever it's needed. So, How do these terms and how does this quiet quitting apply in the business of equine practice? And let's talk about vets and staff, because we know both are in short supply right now. For sure. I think that for veterinarians, it's hard to imagine any of my colleagues being like the true definition of a quiet quitter. I think if you've stuck around in equine practice, you are probably going above and beyond the call of duty no matter what. So I like to think of the disengagement a little bit more than the quiet quitting. So an engaged employee is one who's enthusiastic about their work and the workplace, and they're working in the best interest of that organization or business. So there may be veterinarians out there working really hard and caring for their patients, but because of that lack of care that they feel or, you know, Um, involvement that they feel from management, they are not necessarily putting 100% into pushing the organization's best interests as much as they could. So for me, a lot of this comes back to really aligning core values with the person, the employee working and the practice. I don't think we learn enough or spend enough time working on our own core values or our practice's core values. For me, it was easy for a long time. I was a solo practitioner. They went hand in hand. If I didn't like something, I got to change it. But it's different now that I have an employee and keeping her engaged means taking into consideration things that really matter to her. So for the vet side of things, I wouldn't say that I think we have this generation of quiet quitters because I think it's just too hard (laughs) to be an equine vet to to kind of coast along um, because everybody's working hard and are amazing, but I do think that we really need to focus on increasing engagement in our practices for sure. And I think the same can be said for staff. Um, At AAEVT this year, I heard the term, we're not just a hitching post. And um, that is their mantra, but it rang true to me because we have, you know, these wonderfully skilled individuals that work for us and with us. And we're, if all they're doing is holding a horse all day long, then we are underutilizing their skill set and we are not having them practice to the top of their training. And we're going to lose them to small animal that does, you know, really let them do a lot more um, rather than assist. And, um, you know, even worse, I think it's one thing to lose somebody and then you have to hire and, and find someone new, which we all know is very difficult right now. I feel like it's almost worse to have that person who's just checked out 
because then you are just stagnant and you're going along and it's bound to create issues. It's bound to be picked up by clients who don't see that enthusiasm and um, commitment to, to the goals. So um, I think, you know, we need to find opportunities to identify individuals who are not as engaged and try to stimulate the engagement or be comfortable helping them find something that is of better interest to them so that we can serve them. Um, but overarching, you know, serve our business and, and serve our employees and um, that that's remain and our clients that are depending upon us to really work to the top of our game. I, mean, I think that's a really good point. You talked about the ones that aren't engaged, how they affect the vets and other staff at your practice. And I think a lot of people don't really think about that. They think, well, OK, I've got this this one person. I know she's not really happy, but, you know, she's getting her work done and that's fine. I'm just going to keep paying her. Right. But that really affects everybody else who is busting their butts day in and day out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you always hear that that thought process, you know, you are essentially punishing the really high, you know, producing or strong workers because you end up giving them more responsibilities. So there becomes an even larger disparity between those quiet quitters and your superstars. But then I think that's where we start to find the burnout issues because we, you know, reward our superstars with more responsibility and more things to do. Um, so it's we need to find a better balance for sure. So what do you think are some of the most important ways to keep veterinarians and staff engaged in equine practice? I think for sure it has to do with that kind of involvement that we mentioned before, getting people's ideas out there, making sure that they're heard, making sure that their ideas are welcome. That really ties in with the idea of psychological safety. You're not going to hear people's ideas unless they feel comfortable sharing them. So the idea of psychological safety is that people can admit mistakes or failures without fear of punishment. But it also has to do with feeling comfortable enough to share new kind of maybe innovative ideas without being laughed at or made fun of or told to stop thinking so far outside the box and stay in your lane. So I think practices need to work on that in order to be able to get more feedback and engagement from their employees. The research shows that by increasing psychological safety, you will increase engagement and you will decrease staff turnover. So I think the numbers don't lie in the all the research that is out there about that. And there's some pretty simple ways to do that. Um, we at our practice have, we use a software called 15.5 and it allows for um, some pu you know public praise. Somebody tried this new thing and it worked really great. You all should consider talking to them about it. Um, we also use a Slack channel that is specifically designed for people throwing in new ideas. And that mode of communication feels a little bit safer, I think, for some of the, you know, the wallflowers of the team, um, rather than having to bring it up at a staff meeting in front of everybody, they can throw the idea in there. There can be some comments about it. And then we bring it up at the staff meeting um, for additional discussion. But I've really found uh, that when I put people on the spot at the meeting, hey, you know, how are things going? Is there anything that we should be doing differently? in the heat of the moment they don't think of it or they're they're too nervous to but you run into a, a, an issue or a concern and you then immediately can throw it into this quick you know chat channel and um and then it's out there in the universe and on the team and uh, it opens up the conversation and um i've really found that all of the employees, even people that started two weeks ago, have started throwing ideas um, into the mix, which to me is um, a nice sign that it's created a good mode for, for sharing those ideas. And for me in a smaller practice, it's a little bit easy to think like, oh yeah, we chat all the time. I don't necessarily need to be so intentional about this, but I've made it a practice that almost every Friday, 
we are in the office at the same time to have an open discussion about that. I think it was maybe a little nerve wracking for my associate at first. <laughs> she didn't really get what I was trying to do, but I was just trying to make sure that I was there with kind of an open mind and open book, not multitasking her so that she could share case questions or, you know, this machine isn't working that well or, um, you know, what's in the plans for next year's budget about upgrading this, this or this. So I've made it an intentional practice to have basically an office hours weekly so that we can discuss because we don't have a huge team and don't have to necessarily um, find an app for that. But I still have to make sure that I'm available. And I think those are, again, some great tidbits. So. Is there any other comments? And I know, again, we could talk about this for hours and I hope that that folks will will listen. But um, what what are some of the other things that maybe just personally you have found that have worked for you to recognize first employees that are disengaged and second to do something about it? I think the saying you've got to work on your business, not just in your business is really important. Another way of saying that is to, you know, take a pause and kind of do some strategic planning on your life or your business. For me, as a solo practitioner, my life and business were very <laughs> intertwined. <laughs> um, but I think if you're not taking some time to kind of look at everybody, spend a little bit of time talking with everybody, looking at the overall picture of how life is going. If you're just out there busting your butt, being the most productive that you can be, I don't know that you are taking full responsibility for your leadership that you need to have in your practice. Good point. Yeah, and I've had uh, the, the pleasure of being on maternity leave recently, and I think that speaks to the pause that Stacy commented on, though I, I don't know how much of a pause it was, but it was a different, <laughs> um, a different uh, view of the business and how it's run and exactly not being, you know, out in the field with employees on a daily basis still gave me the opportunity to look at it from a kind of a larger picture and see how everybody was working together, um, have individual check-ins with everyone and um, really see some of the gaps. That's much easier to do when you take a step back and you're not running around day to day, taking care of all of the clients. Um, it's been an opportunity for me to obviously take care of myself and my new family, but to, to take care of the team um, and have a little bit less focus on the clients for um, a change, which has actually been, I think, very healthy uh, for, for the practice as a whole. Well, that's, those are some great points. And I want to thank both of you for joining me today on the Business of Practice podcast. And a big thanks to our sponsor, Care Credit. And we invite you to visit equimanagement.com or your favorite podcast network to hear each episode of The Business of Practice. And if you have any questions or suggestions, send me an email to kbrown, that's the letter K Brown, at equinenetwork.com. The Business of Practice podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network, LLC. Mm-hmm.